subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome to the print. I'm Stain Shalit Philip, and you're watching the Defence Tracker. Well, every week I come and interact with you, tell you about the latest development in the defence uh, arena. But today, let's do it differently. Uh, the latest news is that the Rolls Royce and the HA have signed up a deal. Now, what is this deal about? Uh, what's Rolls Royce doing in India? What is the future ahead? Uh, for this, I have uh, two people from Rolls Royce to talk to us. I have with me uh, Kishore Jairaman. He is the president of Rolls Royce India and South Africa. And I have also uh, with me Abhishek Singh, uh, who is the senior vice president of business development at Rolls Royce. And welcome to the print, both of you. Thank you, Snehesh. Pleasure to be here. Thank Snehesh. you. Thank you. So, uh, Kishore, my first question is to you. What is this deal about that you've signed with HAM? It is, in my view, it is uh, empowerment to our relationship with HAL. It is the strengthening of the marriage that we have with HAL. It is a journey that started back in 1956, which has been very robust, which has been filled with trials and tribulations. And it is to show the strength with which we can move forward every single day, even after 60 years. There's new things to do and new things to learn from and new things to build on. So that is this relationship at a very high strategic level. But then when you look at the real deal itself, it is about the Adore engines. It is about parts for the Adore engines. It's about creating a supply chain within India for the Adore engines. And as we know, the Adore engines power the uh, Hawk uh, trainer aircraft and our combat aircraft. And so by having this particular initiative with HAL, the... Uh, the biggest advantage that India gains out of that is that we are going to be more self-reliant. We are going to be able to make these parts in India for the engines that fly in India and for the engines that also fly globally. So not only is it an initiative for India, it's an initiative for the globe. And uh, the Adore engines, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we lost you in between. It's for the Hawks as well as for the Jaguar aircraft, right? Yes, that is correct. And uh, this particular deal uh, is for both the engines because there is multiple two variants, two different variants for it, if I'm not mistaken. This has got a lot of complex parts inside, and this will cover the Adore engines, the split of which is a little bit more complicated for us at this interaction, but it is more to do with the engines itself, more complex parts that are going to be made in India from HA. So, Abhishek, since you know, you've been uh, leading this particular project, uh, you know, for the viewers would like to understand when you say parts of the engine, so what are the kind of parts that would be manufactured in India and why did it take about 30 years, you know, for this, uh, for this development to take place? Yeah, good uh, question, Snehesh. And uh, so if you look at it, um, uh, we have been, as, as Kishore said, partnering with HAL for many years. And on the Adore alone, it's been, you know, uh, since uh, ni uh, early 1980. Uh, you know, 1978, 80 onwards. So, so the question is that, that uh, they have been a licensed manufacturer for uh, the Adore parts for many years already. And I, and I think uh, what's happened is that over the last few years, they have continued to increase their capabilities. And what we felt was this was the right time for us to start partnering with them. And if you look at it, there are three elements to this, as, as uh, you know, Kishore alluded to. The first one is that we are working with them because they already have the capability. So it just makes it easier for us to kind of, you know, start looking at uh, the uh, economic value that we get for our global supply chain. So it was good to work from that perspective. Uh, the second element is that it helps us from uh, the, you know, just helping the Atma Nirbhar self-reliant India and also from the initiative about uh, more defense exports. So that was the second element and thought that we had. And finally, the most important thing, as you know, is that uh, when we look at markets like India, the engines are operated for many, many years, uh, you know, beyond what uh, most of the, I would say, uh, other, uh, you know, uh, I would say services operated for. And one of the challenges you have is that the supply chain starts drying up. And we know that the Adore in India would, uh, in all probability, uh, you know, be operated and be in service uh, for another 20 to 25 years. So it was important for us to ensure that we actually are building that supply chain capability in country in order to meet the requirements for the future. 
So from uh, so as you can see from multiple elements, it just ticks the box, and that is why it was the right time for us to kind of uh, embark on this endeavor. Um, and to your question around what sort of parts, so I think uh, there are uh, complex parts that we're looking at. Um, and uh, without getting into the specific details, uh, uh, these are parts which will require special processes, and hence it is all the more important because it is going to be you know high technology parts, which is something which we want uh, to see the Indian supply chain uh, you know building that capability on. Perfect. Uh, you know, Kishore. Uh, you know, while you know he was talking about uh, while Abhishek was talking about the uh, the engine per se. You know, I got reminded of the fact that you had mentioned that this would be not just for India but also for the world. So you're saying any future, uh, you know, once this the whole setup is completed, any future alloy engines would have uh, parts which are made in India. That is our hope. That definitely is our hope. We will start with the existing engines, which is a lot easier, and then we'll go to any future engines that are to come about. And. You know, uh, Kishu, while we talk about Make in India, you know, the governments all push for Atmanirbhar Bharat, Make in India. A lot of it has been, focus has been on the private sector. You know, uh, now you have uh, gone ahead and now signed a deal with HL. So the obvious question that everybody is like, you know, why HL? Why not the private sectors? You have multiple uh, companies uh, who, who are in the aerospace sector. So well, to be very honest with you, our journey with HAL started uh, back in 1956. And, um, you know, since that time, they've had technology transfer and they have worked with us, uh, you know, all along in the MRO side of all their door engines. And then we have a joint venture with HAL. So there's been a lot of interactions and experience and um, exchanges. And so it is a natural progression, not to go, go into any other details, but it's a natural progression for us. Now, the other piece of things is that Adore Indians today, the MRO is with HA. So yeah. it doesn't, uh, it is automatic, um, you know, sort of a route in order to build on that. And it is not to say that we are not going to be doing it with anybody else also. We are going to be doing complex parts with HA, but we are also going to be looking for other suppliers with capabilities uh, that are different. And we, the civil aerospace side, we work very closely with Tata. We work very closely with, uh, with uh, you know, Bharat Forge. We work closely with Godrej. We work closely with Tamil, Tassel. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of other suppliers in the private sector that we work with. We are agnostic when it comes to partnering or when it comes to supply chain uh, between private and government. It's about the capability and the ability to deliver uh, the value. You know, uh, that's, that's good to know. And uh, Kishore, this, you know, for the viewers, you know, it's not just the, uh, the Jaguars, uh, that are powered by the Rolls Royce engines, uh, but also the fact that the C 130J, you know, the Super Hercules is the four engine aircraft, which is again powered yep. by, uh, yep. by Rolls Royce. Right. Uh, but when it comes to fighters, you know, besides, of course, Jaguar, I think, uh, you know, uh, most of it has been backed by your US competitor, and including when it comes to the Tejas aircraft. Is the, is the fighter segment something that you're looking at? Look, I mean, I think if you look at it, uh, when we won the Jaguars, when we won the Hawk Trainers, everybody said that your European competitor has won all these deals, you know, you know to our US competitor. So, you know, people have engines, aircrafts, and uh, the right aircraft with the right engine for the right uh, need for the forces always wins. So, they won the LCA, and the LCA has continued to deliver value to the Indian Air Force. Similarly, our trainers have delivered a lot of value to the you know indian you know upcoming pilots and also to the combat side of things with the jaguars and the transport side of things with the c-130s now when you look at the future i think it becomes very imperative that in the combat side what is the future for india and that is where rolls royce also is very keen and rolls royce believes we can be a very able partner to building an engine with india for the advanced medium combat aircraft so I think that is the area of the future is to co-create and co-develop and co-manufacture. It goes in line with the indigenous design and manufacturing initiative that India wants or the Atmanirbhar programs. So I think, you know, if you look at it, winning and losing is part of the thing, but it's about the strategic value that the companies bring for a strategic product at a strategic time for a strategic reason. And I think we've been lucky a lot to serve the Indian forces. Well, uh, Kishore, you've just taken up my next question, which was actually on the 
uh, on the future plans of uh, the Rolls Royce. And you mentioned AMCA. Uh, for the viewers, AMCA is the advanced medium combat aircraft, which is the uh, fifth generation uh, fighter aircraft that India is, uh, you know, is in the process of. Uh, right now, the design phase has happened. It's in the process of building. So it will take some years. So you're saying you're very keen on the AMCA project too. Absolutely, yes. I mean, more than very keen on just one product. I think the keenness is more on the co-creation concept. Because at the end of the day, when we co-create, we are generating IP. And what IP does is, with the IP, it can be a product that is made in India. It is designed in India. It is made in India after that. You create your supply chain while you're designing the product. And you create services concepts. And it creates a whole new ecosystem in the aerospace sector for India. And so we are firm believers that we can produce the right engine or create the right engine along with the relevant agencies in India and be able to manufacture it with the relevant partners in India and be able to deliver the value to the Indian Air Force in the future. So are you already in talks? Where have the stocks progressed so far in terms of when you say uh, Indian design, you know, and you say India design and India developed, India manufactured. So where are the talks now headed to? We've had a lot of talks with a lot of agencies, both government and private, but okay, we, these are all talks and it's all along the way. Uh, moving along. So I don't have much to disclose in that front right now, but definitely there's been very promising and very uh, fruitful conversations that have been happening. Uh, very frequent. You know, uh, correct me, Abhishek, but you've also recently uh, uh, signed an MOU for uh, marine engines, uh, right? Yeah. And uh, India is traditionally uh, dependent on the Russian or let's say now the Ukrainian, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, support as well as the marine engines are concerned. So if you could tell our viewers what, what's happening on that front, why the sudden focus on marines and how many of uh, our military vessels are actually powered by, uh, you know, Rolls Royce. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And uh, Sneesh, you're absolutely right. We signed an MOU uh, in April this year with HAL, and that is for the MT-30 engine. Uh, so that engine uh, is uh, basically the whole uh, MOU is around finding and actually exploring avenues for us and HL to partner together um, and uh, uh, do the packaging part of the engine over here and also providing a lot of the after uh, market services that would come along with it. Um, so the reason we have started with the MT-30 because it is one of the most, I would say, high-end technology engines that are there on the marine side. And uh, if you look at it, it's uh, probably the, uh, the most power dense uh, engine globally. And it is being operated by multiple uh, navies across the globe. Uh, so you're right. Uh, traditionally, it has been a market which has been, uh, which has had, uh, the, as you said, Ukrainian as well as some, uh, you know, US, uh, I would say, uh, you know, uh, players who have been there. But we think that this specific engine that they're getting to the market, um, uh, we should be able to really showcase the value of that to the customer. Um, and uh, that is where we have, again, partnered with HAL, and we are progressing on that and also trying to engage with the respective shipyards and Navy to really, uh, you know, talk about the value of this offering. Now, to your question, uh, do we have Naval Marine? Uh, uh, yes, we do have Naval Marine uh, as a part of the Rolls-Royce portfolio. Uh, and I think I should probably hand this question to uh, Kishore because he can talk to the MTO diesel generators uh, on the Naval side. Kishore, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I think uh, P-17 Alpha is a classic example where we have the MTO engines. Uh, we talk to the Coast Guard very often. There are plenty of MTU engines for the Coast Guard. And so MTU has been a very solid brand of reciprocating engines, which are diesel powered uh, and have worked very closely with the Navy and the Coast Guard. We have also worked very closely with the shipyards, uh, whether it be Goa shipyard, whether it be CSL, MDL, GRSC. In fact, we do have a packaging partnership with GRSC um, with our Rolls Royce system solutions business. So, you know, our presence in the marine world has been uh, tremendous from a power systems business point of view. What we are seeing is that when we go to the aircraft carriers, the destroyers, the frigates, um, there is plenty of opportunity for a very dense power pack with a lot more power generation capability that can also combine hybrid propulsion. So the future is going to be about hybrid before we all get all electric. And so to get into that world, Rolls-Royce already is looking at hybrid propulsions uh, for very large uh, carriers in the Navy, naval fleet. And so we can 
do the needful there by partnering with all parties in India and bringing it home to India. So you're saying the hybrid engines are for the frigates, the destroyers? Yes. Yes, because the future is going to be about hmm. hybrid. We are all talking about environment. We are all talking about sustainability. It's not going to be all diesel gen sex or it's not going to be all fossil fuel powered, natural gas powered engines. It's going to be a combination. And I think that combination will yield the best efficiency in terms of power requirements and in terms of the environment. And I think Rolls-Royce is a firm believer that the environment matters a lot. And sustainability is absolutely essential. And we need it for us to be living in a much cleaner world into the future. And so we will bring the hybrid propulsion to the marine technology that we have today. Okay, so you already have a uh, hybrid engine which is there? Uh, we have a lot of works, yes. We definitely have uh, under rail power generation which are hybrid already. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, solutions in the naval side for hybrid and electrification. So yes, we are working very seriously on that and we are moving it forward. It, it, exact examples I don't have with me right now, but uh, there are definitely examples available on that. Well, uh, that's good to hear. And uh, thank you so much for uh, coming onto the print and explaining to your viewers uh, what this deal with HA is. You, uh, you know, I'm sure many of us, uh, many of them who are hearing this particular interview would be happy to uh, hear you talk about the AMCA engine, which is a big priority for you. You know, an engine that would be uh, designed in India, uh, manif uh, developed and manufactured in India is going to be huge. Uh, news uh, as far as uh, the Go Indian aviation so. setup is concerned. So yeah. fingers crossed, yes. yes. And <laughs> best of luck uh, both Abhishek and Kishore. Thank you so much for talking to the trade. It was, was a pleasure to meet you and interact with you, Snehesh. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Snehesh.